Welcome back to Stasis. We've already checked out this lab over here in hydroponics. Let's go check out this one before we go here and find out exactly the source of all of these roots. Oh my god. Those are the bugs, the deadly bugs that were mentioned in the note that I read last episode, aren't they? Insect swarm. The insects swarm in great clusters, their bodies luminous like fireflies. Okay. Chris Rogers. Chris Rogers, was it you who was mentioned dying to the hands of the bugs? Chris Rogers. I'm curious. When Solomon went through in a rat suit, they ripped it from his body and stung him to death. Solomon. Hmm. Well, that's not Solomon. Regardless, I'm pretty sure I shouldn't go through the bugs. Although I kind of want to, just to see what the death animation is like, you know? <laughs> I am kind of curious. But uh, let's look around first. The vines are winning a slow, methodical war to bend and rip this tree from its roots in the floor below. A soft, mechanical inhalation sound is audible here, while the tank collects oxygen produced by the room's abundant plant life. Oxygen levels increasing. Oh. Uh... Do I want to do that? I guess so, because I can't turn it off. So, uh, cool. The sprouts in this planter have surged forth, straining to reach the hydroponic lights above. I feel like I'm dangerously close to the bugs. Yep. It's like John was... It's like John was wearing a suit made of bugs. That was, like, seriously thick. Okay, let's just, like, maybe not even come in here. Like, is there anything I can grab? I mean, I can turn this on, I guess. And, uh, what do I have on me? I've got the metal plaque. That's not gonna do anything. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh god. Oh no. I clicked on the fan. I, as soon as I clicked on the fan, I'm like, wait a minute. Is he gonna walk? Oh no. No. Not the bees. Not the bees. It's like a ghillie suit made of bugs. Anyway, uh, let's just go this way. What the fuck is that? Are you fucking kidding me? What? It's, it's some sort of insect. Good mistakes. It's tied up. It doesn't look like you can get loose. Tied up? How big is it? Um... I think we found the queen. Jesus Christ. Large swollen milk sac. A mottled abdomen, swollen egg sac, or plump milk gland. Possibly all three. Semi organic suction cups were custom designed to harvest this creature's excretions. Semi organic? Wait, it just like released pheromones and a little like smiley face popped up over it. As if they've visualized the pheromones to determine its mood. And these 
milking suction cups were obviously designed for it. So was it actually this big before? Like, is this actually not overgrown? Is this how big it was even before? Uh. Yeah, look, it's happy, apparently. Smiley face. Happy bug. It's difficult to grasp the idea and form of this insect creature. Udder-like protuberances sprout from its bulbous abdomen, while the pincers stab the air. I am not going to touch that thing. This receptacle stores the processed milk. There's the tanks. These tanks exist to collect what is being milked from the brute. Hardened amber. Amber trickles from the tree, but most of it is hardened into an incredibly tough compound. Hmm. Can I, like, break it out with a metal plaque or something? I don't know what I was thinking. Man. Bash it with the empty pistol? Nope. The tree has been pierced in various spots by these two tubes. As you watch, the milk travels sluggishly through them and into the tree. The tree is being supplied with milk from this thing? Why? A tall, strangely shaped tree grows out of a housing space in the floor. Milk from the creature is being fed into the tree by a pair of tubes. How much of this was still in place before everything went to hell, and how much of this happened after? I mean, this must have all been done before, right? I don't think the the monsters set up these tubes and these cables and stuff, right? Let's see. Um... Personal logs, and then just the general log for the Queen's life cycle. Or I could activate suction pumps. Uh, let's not do that. Monday. Healthy, docile, responsive to stimuli. Milking as normal. Tuesday, no activity. Wednesday, healthy, heightened aggression. Recommended milking with only experienced staff. Thursday, no activity. Friday, healthy, highly aggressive. Three personnel wounded in milking. Oh my god. Yeah, so it must have been this big before. If the queen could actually just wound people trying to milk it, then it must have been very, very large. Saturday. Healthy, quiet. Unusual brooding behavior. Milking normal. Healthy, aggressive. One fatality via venom pouches. <laughs> it's got venom pouches. <laughs> uh... Okay, so you want it to be happy. Obviously, otherwise it will kill you if you try to milk it, I guess. Alright, let's look at... Let's look at Tenchu's personal logs. Oh, praise God Almighty. I couldn't be happier. Dr. Gray took me to one side and told me that I was the only person who had the skill and ability to take control of the nursery. He promoted me on the spot and said that I was now personally responsible for the queen. The royal jelly that she produces has proved to be incredibly useful. I discovered through my own analysis that not only is the jelly an essential nutrient for the insect population, but that it has other amazing physical properties too. It accelerates molecular bonding in certain substances, acting as a thickener for many natural substances, while also regenerating their natural properties. With some engineering, I imagine we could turn this into a true medical breakthrough. I imagine doctors in hospital wards on Earth using our bonding agent to heal wounds instantly. Perhaps finally the Tenshu name will be revered in medical history, instead of reviled. The Queen is a temperamental little thing. <laughs> Wait, let's just hold on, hold on a second. Little thing? <laughs> Little thing? You call that thing little? <laughs> the queen is a temperamental little thing. A fiery lady, to be sure. Ah, but queenie, you forget. I grew up in a family with more than one fire-breathing dragon. 
If I can handle my mother, I can certainly handle you. Although, when she's milked, she's rather docile, I dare say. Or, I dare say she's rather attached to me. I'm sure I heard her purring at me. That's the only way I can describe it. I'm aware that she's a bug and all, but it sounded rather like approval. My parents kept hives of bees, so I've never been squeamish over insects. And I can tell the difference between aggression and favor. I'm still the only person who can get close without being bitten. And her bite can leave one hell of a mark, let me tell you. Hodgkin said he'll report his side effects upon his return from sick leave. <coughs> In other news, Dr. Mirick, one of Dr. Gray's subordinates, has requested samples of the jelly for experiments with his tree resins. He thinks it might have a use as an industrial adhesive. Uh, this is a little... This is a little way from my original intention, but I do suppose it's a start. Hmm. I, I have a feeling I'm going to be doing something with this. That I'm going to be getting some of the royal jelly and perhaps combining it with the tree res resin to make some sort of adhesive or something. Between this and the vaporizer, I'm definitely going to have to do some sciencing. Also, I'm sorry, but this thing purred at you? It purred? Ugh. I try so hard to be positive. To be the person whose enthusiasm never once flags nor fails. But when you start hearing rumors that appall you to your very core... I tried to shrug it off, but recently it's become harder to deny it. I've been hearing sounds from the elevator shafts. The sound of a wailing infant crying out in pain before suddenly being silenced. That is no rumor. Sometimes I lay awake at night, and I swear I can hear the crying of children. I can't be dreaming. I saw Ingratia to confess my fears. He gave me a prescription to help me sleep, but something in his eyes said that he knew I was hearing something real. And worse, it was something he was hearing too. More rumors. Dr. Milan is using children in his research. I have to ignore it. If it were true, Cain would remove him immediately. Surely. Even Dr. Gray appears to find it an uncomfortable subject for discussion. And this is a man who slept easily when Isaac got his left cheek torn off by the Queen. Is Dr. Gray short of staff again? Once again, I'm being forced to manage multiple projects. Only this time, it's an examination of an acutely destructive new spore that seems to have infected a few of the pods. First observations. It's a parasitic fungus that grows faster than a common weed. And, like a common weed, I feel it should be destroyed. But I know that Dr. Gray won't do it. He, like many of the other senior doctors, sees any new species as something to be exploited or weaponized. In the darkness, something stirs. I can't say what. I'm too afraid to find out what it is. When Ivan and Theo disappeared a month back, we assumed they'd somehow deserted. That was the official stance talk taken by Dr. Milan and the board, anyway. Last night's events proved that there is something on board with us, though God knows where it's from. The queen was more rambunctious than I've seen her before, and milking her was certainly more challenging than I'm used to. Edmund was assisting. We've been short on staff, and some of our volunteers are simply refusing to show for work. The queen's environment has been disturbed a great deal, and so her violent tendencies are more pronounced. Edmund was on his way out of hydroponics when it happened. A thing, some thing, pulled him into one of the air ducts, I didn't see much. I saw him walking towards the decontamination chamber, and the next moment his legs were kicking in the air as whatever it was dragged him up and into the ceiling, while he squealed like a pig. I'm resigning tomorrow. I did not sign up for mad science. I came to Cain to serve humanity and clear my family's name, not watch my crewmates be slaughtered by a species that Dr. Milan refuses to confirm or deny. If only I'd resigned when I said I would. And if only they hadn't ignored my demands to have the infernal fungus destroyed. 
It's growing over me now. Over my skin. It's burrowing into my flesh. The insects attacked again today. And it seems to only worsen. Dr. Gray was destroyed by a swarm of them. And now he is only fertilizer for that ever-ravenous mold he was so curious about. The uninfected are making an attempt to escape. This doesn't include me. The emergency flares keep the bugs away. I told them to give me the flare to hold back the bugs so they could get away. I hope they escape soon. This fungus is making my head feel funny. I'm sure I can feel it growing through my ear canal. Oh, God. This game is really tapping into a lot of fears, isn't it? Fears of insects and things growing inside of your body. Jesus. Hmm. Alright, so emergency flares are good for keeping the bugs away. I'm probably going to have to use that to get through them. God, I feel bad for Tenshu. Just trying to get back. You know, their family name. After everything that happened. Trying their best, and then look what they got involved with. Now, let's take a look at the emails. From Dr. Gray to Tenshu. Regarding foolish pranks. Azika. With the greatest respect, could you please stop the ridiculous pranks your group insists on carrying out in the fertilization chambers? I will admit that they're hardly dangerous, but they are undignified. I certainly wouldn't like to be present when a cane inspector stumbles upon young Theodore racing in front of the Queen, hands above his head while shouting, I'm covered in bees! It is unprofessional. Please instruct them to cease their foolishness at once. Kind regards, Dr. Gray. <laughs> I'm covered in bees. <laughs> uh, from Dr. Something Something Way to Tenshu. Re Re, a matter of spirit. Akiza, don't worry. I don't think that you're losing your mind. Ghosts are a possibility, but I suspect what you're hearing is perhaps the sounds of devices playing in other parts of the ship. I do believe at the moment that the corporeal world and spirit world are very much divided. So, try to calm yourself. If you would like, I can talk to someone in cargo storage about those sounds, but I wouldn't worry about it. This island is full of noises, but pay them no mind. For once, I'm quoting Shakespeare and not the Bible. Get some sleep and maybe do fewer night shifts. Eleanor. Okay, so I could attempt to milk it, I suppose. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and save the game now. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? The amber stuff and the sap and all that is probably to be used to fix the vaporizer. That's what I'm betting. Alright, um, let's activate the suction pumps and just see what happens. Oh, it just worked. We've got the Queen's milk. Mmm. You want to drink it, John, and see what it tastes like? Hmm. Maybe. Mm, no. All right, fair enough. Should I try and touch the queen insect? I mean, it seems to be happy. I'm just gonna save it again. Yep. It's fun just to see all the ways John can die. How many ways have we seen? There's dying by the bees, dying by the queen, dying from explosion, dying from the turret. Hmm. There's probably one or two more that I'm forgetting. Uh, 
Uh, what if I put it on the it amber? Like that. Obviously, I'm supposed to put the queen's milk like in or on something. Mm. Hmm. I also need a light source to get away the the bugs. Like, I need flares. I don't have a light source, though. Hmm. I mean, I guess I could maybe light the oxygen. I, I don't remember. Is oxygen... Is oxygen flammable? I don't actually know. I don't remember. Um, but I suppose it doesn't matter, because I don't actually have a source of fire or, or heat. What if I pour queen's milk on the tree? Uh, no. What Crazy. if I pour queen's milk on a collection I tank? Think that'll work. What if I open it for funsies? And then... Run away! Yeah, what do I do with the milk? Milk, 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 milk. <sighs> mm, let me think about this one. Hmm. Looks like the, uh, the queen's milk goes onto the vaporizer pad, but... I mean, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with it until I repair the crack in the vaporizer's glass, right? Vaporizer chamber yeah. compromised. Chamber is not here, right? How would I make it airtight? Uh, nothing I have is possibly gonna fill the fracture. I need a glue or something. Like some sort of adhesive. Like maybe the amber stuff, the sap. Something like that. Maybe I touch it when it, like, does the happy secretion pheromone thing? Let's just wait patiently and see. Come on. Be happy. Be happy. Aha! Gotcha! Ew! That was too close. I got the... pincer? Wait, why did I just rip off its pincer? I thought I was getting, like, the queen's jelly or something. I... Okay, that's weird. God, I hate it when I do something in an adventure game and I don't really know why. Like, why did he do that? I mean, I guess it's the only sharp thing in this and Like, was the simplest option- I needed something sharp to, like, get at this amber, I think. Was the simplest option really to wait for the right moment to rip off the pincer off of this giant queen? Like, is that really the best option to find something sharp? <laughs> what? Okay. It's gotta be the amber, right? Yeah, let's collect some. Got the tree sap, so if I combine the tree sap with the queen's milk, I think it'll produce an adhesive. Now, I'm not sure if I should do that right now in my inventory, or if I should, like, put the tree sap on and then coat it in milk. Let's try that first. Uh, I think that would break. Alright, let's combine them. I think that would break. Hmm. I think that'll just break it. Hmm. Maybe. Mm, no. Ah, there we go. Alright. So I guess it's not just the sap, but I needed like a... Like a patch material. An adhesive, and then some sort of a backing. I guess the metal plate's the backing. I didn't realize that metal plate was so bendable. I don't know what I was thinking there. Oh, is the sap already fixed? I mean, I guess it did come from a tree that's already been fed milk. Um, alright, are we good? Airtight. Bingo! <sighs> mm. 
Yeah, now I've got a... a actually, what did I just make? Vaporized Queen Pheromone. Yeah, that. Actually, is there anything else I can vaporize? What about my empty pistol? Hmm. Maybe. Mm, no. No. Crazy. Okay, Queen's Pheromone. Um... I don't actually know what I'm gonna do with that. Is it for the bugs? I don't think that'll work. Oh, ho hold on, hold on, John. Don't... Okay, okay. I thought for a second he's gonna walk into the cloud. Okay. Are they now docile, or was that my chance that I missed it? I think that was my chance that I missed it. So let's try doing that again. Because I could probably just go make more, right? Okay, so let's do that again, and then this time, I guess, as soon as I do it, go for the oxygen collection tank, maybe? I'm gonna save it first. Or maybe I combine it with this. I think that nah. will just break it. Alright, do that again. And... Run! What? John, please die faster so I can reload. Hmm. Hmm. So, um... What do I do? Do I just run through the center? To the other side. Run! I don't get it. Do I have to wait a second? It looks like they kind of like disappear for a second and then they reappear a second later. Am I going slightly too soon? Round three. Let's uh, wait a second this time. Okay, and go. Okay, maybe throw it into the fan. I hate bugs. Oh, okay. So it attracts the bugs to the pheromones. And so by throwing it into the fan, they all went into the fan and died. See? That makes sense. But uh, what would have helped is if I knew that they were actually being attracted directly to the pheromones, because it really was not clear. I was throwing it in the center of the bugs, and they all just, like, went invisible for, like, two seconds and then came back. It didn't look like they were clustering around it. I didn't know if the pheromones were to keep the bugs away, to repel them, or to attract them, or what. Anyway... Feedback game? Feedback! One. Oxygen levels increasing to dangerous levels. I'm just gonna kill myself another way, I guess. Let me save again. It's not the bugs, it's the oxygen that gets me. Ew! 
What did you just do, John? Why did you do that? You, like, touched the body and then it exploded like a gigantic blister. <laughs> he doesn't even say anything. He's at a loss for words. Well, um... I can make it really, really bad in here as far as oxygen goes, but why do I actually want to do that? Uh, I might kill myself. I'm, j I'm just not going to touch it yet. It's beautiful. The oxygen garden's my favorite part of any ship. Green, full, natural. I don't know if I'd call this beautiful. There's some very, very not beautiful things here. Such as the dead person. And the corpse like in the water. And the bloody handprints. But hey, there is a flare. Which I can use to get past bugs. Every so often, the overflow from this collection pool spills onto the human form below, anointing its face with water. Why did you do that, John? The vines surround this body so completely that you're surprised when you notice it still draws breath. Unconscious? The soul must have been resting here for a while. Unless the vines grew incredibly quickly. Wait, the body is still drawing breath? Verdant plant life covers nearly every surface of the room. This bridge spans a pair of observation platforms. Hmm, I want to get up there. Is there any way for me to get up there? I don't see a way. Oh my god, what? I can- I can walk here? Holy crap! Uh, wow. The whole right side of the screen... Wow, um... This- for some reason this scene is incredibly confusing for me. My eyes- my eyes are telling me that everything from this walkway into the right side of the screen are on the upper level. And that this whole thing is like cut off. Like I, it, it's really hard for me to tell depth here. I didn't realize I could walk under this, and this was all ab above. Now that I'm walking here, these things make sense. But everything I was seeing on the right side of the screen just looked confusing. Like if I'm over here, this all just looks like it's up, and I. This room is very visually strange. Uh. Okay. Well, that, uh, that makes sense, now. Oh god. Oh god. god. It's alive. Eleanor! She is encrusted with fungus and vines, a human nerve center for the twisting growths around her. Appallingly, she's still alive. Algae has left scum over the surface of the water of the stagnant pool. I feel like she's going to bite me if I get near her. Hmm. I'm gonna save it and then try to talk to her. If she's even capable of talking. I could cut you free. There's no point.
I can't save her. There's nothing I can do to save her. Um... I don't have an efficient, like, clean way to kill her. I could... bash her in the head with the butt of my empty pistol, I guess, but that's not a clean way to go. Should I try it? I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, good. I'm glad that doesn't work. This growth twists upward like a horned blemish bursting forth from skin. Its surface is firm but porous, different from the vines and trees surrounding it. Hmm. Firm but porous. I wonder if maybe this thing will absorb the milk, the queen's milk, and grow. Well, let's read her PDA. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all. I simply wish his kindness had extended to Chelsea. The galley chef told me that a few of the other crew members are uncomfortable with having an ARG patient on staff. I asked if her work was in any way below standard, at which point he grew uncomfortable and admitted exactly as I thought. No, she was a superb worker, but his team were uncomfortable with her anyway. Being a geneticist and a Christian may appear contradictory to most, but that is their burden, not mine. I believe in grace and mercy. It wasn't Chelsea's fault she was born an ARG baby. James, my ex-husband, blamed me. James wanted her terminated, and when I refused, he packed up and left. That suits me. I'd rather be without an unloving husband and father than without my beautiful child. And she is. She's beautiful. A gift from God. And for a ship full of the most supposedly forward-thinking people in the galaxy, their aversion to her condition repulses me. Tolerance and patience are virtues greatly praised by the Lord. But aboard the Groom Lake, I find my stores of both these virtues sorely tested. I discovered through one of my subordinates that a new shipment arrived on board a few days ago, destined for Project Seed. My disapproval of the dangers of Seed are no secret. Considering the size of the shipment, and the clear attempt to cut me out of the loop regarding the delivery, I suspect some of my colleagues are trying to mask the precise nature of what it is that has arrived. If it is as I suspect, there will be no, and I mean no, lengths I will not go to in order to depose Dr. Milan. Kane Corporation is a company for the promotion of the sciences, not for the sinister schemes and unprincipled ambitions of individuals. I have moral issues with Kane and their weapons research. It tests my faith. But Kane's medical breakthroughs have changed the world, and my world too. It's because of Kane created research that Chelsea is even alive. This is why I do what I do. I work in genetics to find cures for my dearest Chelsea, and others like her, not for money. It's my job to put things right for her. I had lunch with Dr. Gray this afternoon. He is an odious little man and utterly misanthropic. But if you need somebody to talk about Project Seed, then there are a few people who give up information more easily. His ego easily outweighs his sense of confidentiality. Project leaders and project members are not allowed to discuss details of individual projects, but he can't resist himself. Nevertheless, he revealed disturbing details. I'm aware of our sample origins. We need human genetic material in order to develop cures for human beings. It's a hard truth. But there's paperwork, permission forms, and contracts that create this supply. That shipment has none of those things. They're children. Oh god, in all your great mercy, how could you let Milan, that unholy monster, do this? It's taken months. But finally, I found a young cargo worker named Danica Boxer. She was referred to me by Dr. Tenshu. Such a sweet girl. It seems the cargo was a combination of adults and children, all of whom were acquired through illegal channels for use in genetic research. 
I did not agree to this. I'll leave this place and take Chelsea with me before I spend one minute more working for a company that endorses the use of children in research. There are not enough words to describe the soulless creatures that did this. Revenge? I don't believe in revenge. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Where is she? The creatures are attacking in full force. The screams are over the radio. They're dying. They're all dying. I hear them scuttle through the vents. See the blood they spill and spray over the walls. Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh God. Please bring her to me. I'm trapped in hydroponics. Please let my little girl find me. Oh, it says voice note. I can see Chelsea inches from me, lifeless. I contemplated taking my own life as she died just before my eyes. When those creatures attacked, the crew sealed off parts of the ship and I was left trapped in hydroponics. That fungus got to me, and now it's inside, profaning my body, its nerves wrapped around my cerebral cortex. I can feel it move. I try to move my arms, but it won't let me. It's making me watch the fungus consume my baby girl. I must watch and pray for the end to come. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. Jesus Christ. She watched her daughter die while she was being taken over by the fungus. Alright, some emails. Dr. Wei. Your comments are most flattering. I suspect, however, that a promotion isn't forthcoming because of the lack of attention paid to our section. Ignorance is frustrating. Our lack of understanding of what takes place at the top of this food chain is of great irritation to me. You do seem to be pushing relentlessly for information about this cargo, though, and I'm somewhat uncomfortable discussing it any further. I fear I may have already said it, already said too much. For the sake of your career, my dear, I'd suggest discontinuing your pursuit. You're a fine geneticist, and are clearly one of the most talented people on this ship. Don't let it go to waste. Dr. Wei. I know that you're a spiritual woman, and at times receive a great deal of criticism for this, but I feel I can speak to nobody else. I'm well known for my positivity and cheerfulness, and I believe I've earned my nickname, Dr. Gray's Smile. I am haunted by what I'm hearing on this ship, and wonder if perhaps it's merely induced by my own fears. Ah, to hell with it. I'll ask you straight out. Do you believe in ghosts? You may think that I'm being ridiculous or delusional, but I can hear things. Children crying, deep in the bowels of the ship. I work many late nights, and I'm convinced that I can hear crying through the vents. Where are these sounds coming from? I did hear rumors that before the Groom Lake was refitted, a group of children were brought on board and their quarters were on this deck. There was a malfunction with the heating units and, well, they all died. I don't want to seem like I'm wasting your time, but I enjoyed our talk yesterday and your open-mindedness about matters of the soul. Kind regards, Akiza. Poor Eleanor and Chelsea. As depressing of a place as it is to end, I think I better end this episode here before it becomes way too long. Jesus. 
I guess the next thing to do is try to put her out of her misery? With exactly what, I'm not quite sure. But apparently this growth is porous and that might be... That might be important. Yeah, perhaps I try to use the milk on it or something and make it grow, although I'm not quite sure why I would do that, and I certainly don't think it would kill her. Anyway, uh, I guess we'll figure it out in the next episode. Jesus Christ. I swear, this game just gets darker and darker.